What's going on everyone? Austin John Place here and today I'm going to be going over how you can get shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. First things first, this video is not talking about the most effective ways to get shiny Pokemon. The game literally just released in Australia. Uh, on Thursday today and it releases tomorrow in America. So while a lot of information has been tested and figured out, these are less than perfect measures and less than most effective ways to get shiny Pokemon. Once I figure out those ways, I'm going to link it at the end of the video. But for now, I'm going over some really important things you should know about shiny Pokemon in this game. Let's go over shiny locks with an official data mine from Anubis and the team. Now I have confirmation that the starter Pokemon given to you at the beginning of the game are shiny locked. The Galarian Meowth is shiny locked. The three in-game NPC trades are shiny locked. The four sub-legendary Pokemon that involve a fetch quest of sorts are going to be shiny locked. Your legendary Pokemon from your box art is going to be shiny locked. The X Titans are shiny locked, meaning that after you defeat one of the Titans, you can encounter a regular version of that Pokemon. That's a placed Pokemon. That placed Pokemon is shiny locked. And all of the gimme ghoul chest forms that you're going to be finding in this game are shiny locked. So no reason to reset in front of them. Any paradox Pokemon that you may encounter are not shiny locked. So that is the information that we have so far. Any updates in the pinned comment. In addition, I'm going to do everything in my power to not show you Pokemon that you haven't seen before, except for a few shiny ones that I got of new Pokemon, because I kind of have to show you those to show you the Pokemon, right? <laughs> Don't worry, it's nothing, nothing crazy endgame stuff. So far in my experience in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I've obtained seven shiny Pokemon throughout 100 hours of playing and zero attempts to actually try to get shiny Pokemon with one exception I'll explain later. That includes this Psyduck. The screens don't load very fast. This pale pink Flamigo. This pale pink Oinkalone, or as I call him, Oinkalone. I got a pink Murkrow. I don't know what's going on with, the, with all the pink ones. I got a pink young goose, <laughs> crimson red palmy, who I love, and I got a purple finizen. So these are the seven that I've encountered along my journey so far. I've learned a lot and there's a lot of things to talk about. At your school, at your academy, there are going to be classes that you can take. And when you take these classes, they do tell you specific mechanics in regard to how shiny Pokemon work. Yeah, the game actively talks about them, which is pretty neat, including the fact that they are confirming that it's one out of 4,000 base odds. It's most likely one out of 4,096. And they also go over boosts and buffs and things like that. The game even teases the shiny charm to you, which is pretty great. You get it after completing the Pokedex after getting all 400. Before Pokemon Go or without a whole lot of training, it does require you to be in the post game, get the other version exclusives, including the other version exclusive legendary Pokemon. The shiny charm dramatically increases the rate at which shiny Pokemon are going to be showing up for you. Compounding that with other methods gets you more shiny Pokemon. I think the first thing we talk about is how to encounter shiny Pokemon, because that's really what you want to know, right? Wild shiny Pokemon could show up anytime, anywhere in your game, and you may not know it. So the difference between this game and previous generations in Sword and Shield, we started seeing Pokemon in the overworld and in Pokemon Legends Arceus, anytime that you were near a shiny Pokemon, it would make a big loud sound and you'd see a big icon on screen. That is no longer the case. Shiny Pokemon are visible in the overworld. However, they do not make a sound. Some shinies are very, very close to the original. So you may be unsure and you may not be familiar with what that shiny Pokemon looks like. There's actually a very simple way to check if it is shiny. Let's go over what happens when you experience a shiny Pokemon. Like this Mudbray right here. See? Mudbray. First thing you should do when you encounter one of these shiny Pokemon is, even if you think it's shiny, go to auto saves, turn it off, and then put down a manual save. Putting down a manual save in front of a shiny Pokemon is going to ensure that it doesn't just randomly run away or if you, if you fail it or something else like that, you're going to be safe. 
this little guy right here is inquisitive. He's staring at me. He's wondering why I'm staring at him. He's staring at me. If you're unsure if it's a shiny Pokemon, you can just focus on it using ZL. It's gonna show you the Pokemon's name. And then you throw out your Let's Go Pokemon using R. You see how Weavile has these little, these little sweat marks by its head? That's the indicator of, I can't defeat this. As opposed to this Mareep over here, or Flaffy, defeats it no problem. You could always recall with ZR, by the way. See how he's trying to flee right now? If I were to throw out my let's go, still not able to be defeated. If anything were to happen right now, like it flees, it despawns, it runs too far away from where I am, or I defeat it in battle, things like that, then that Pokemon is going to be gone forever. That's the reason I turned off auto saves and I put down that manual save. Let me just show you. Let me turn the game off, turn it back on. And as we can see, we load back into the world and Mudbray is here and he's back to his original roaming animation. I could just choose to throw out my Pokemon now because I got a back shot. Oh, there we go, nice. Actually, if I wanted that for the thumbnail or something, it, it wasn't a great angle, so I could just run away. I could just walk into him and I get a much better angle. Yeah, much better angle. <laughs> You actually do that back strike from Pokemon Legends Arceus. It has a higher catch rate, and the first turn of battle, it won't attack you. So you actually have a better catch rate if you decide to do that. If you're trying to get it in uh, one of the rarer balls, you could do that, false swipe, put it to sleep, and then you have a much higher chance to catch it. And then if you fail your one exotic Apricorn ball, you could just always just restart and try that again. And I got a critical capture, fantastic. I like to get my shiny Pokemon mostly in Premier Balls. I do want to say that right now on this screen, it doesn't show up with a shiny sprite. In fact, there are no shiny sprites programmed into the game whatsoever. Kind of inconvenient, especially when going through your boxes, which by the way, don't load very fast in the first place. Let's talk about breeding, because breeding is so different in this game. In my opinion, it's better. It's not worse, but it's very different, and because it's so different, a lot of people are going to not like it. Please allow me to explain. First of all, you should have a whole lot of bananas. Artisan Bakery, they don't sell the bananas, but they sell butter. You need a lot of butter and peanut butter. There it is. Peanut butter, you need a lot of peanut butter. Those three ingredients. You could get them all from that store and that store. Those two stores, they sell all the ingredients you need. For reference on the map, it's gonna be located right here. This store, Artisan Bakery, sure cans. That's where you wanna go. By the way, you can get a Destiny Knot from Deli Bird Presents, if you know what that's for. There you go, Deli Bird Presents has it. I'm not too sure when it unlocks. I plan on doing a full breeding video. This is just a quick overview for pre-release. I have already encountered dittos in Terra Raid battles, and in those terror raid battles, you can invite other people. If you know what a Masuda Ditto is, it looks like my method of getting your own Masuda Ditto that I did for Sword and Shield will still work in this game. I just need to fully 100% check that that could be a thing. And once I do, I'll have a video on that. After you become champion and you complete all three main parts of the story, you get access to the judge function for your boxes. It looks like right now, three star raids will guarantee two IVs. Five star raids will guarantee four IVs. They can have more. I got this five IV ditto from a five star raid and I believe six star raids guarantee five IVs. The dittos from other trainers will still get a boost to egg laying times, and dittos from other languages will increase your shiny odds. So before you start breeding Pokemon, select your PC to a nice empty box, find a nice flat piece of land, and then start up a picnic. And I'm gonna choose to make a sandwich. You are going to get a whole bunch of recipes from different places. And this one right here, the great peanut butter sandwich requires peanut butter, butter, and bananas for egg power too. Egg power dictates how quickly you will find eggs during a picnic. So we're gonna do that. It doesn't seem like right now the picks make that much of a difference. I'll know more in a further video. It automatically puts those two spreadings on there. We're gonna take three bananas. One, two, three bananas. There's the top of the bread. 
There's the pick, and boom, we're done with the sandwich. Egg power level two in the top right corner, that's exactly what we want to see. That is going to increase the time in which this basket will produce eggs or I should say hold eggs that those two produce. It seems like with egg level two, it takes about 30 seconds for an egg. So you can, in theory, just wait for this to stack up to 10. It should take five to 10 minutes. Go take a bathroom break or something. That's usually what I did. Or just every three, four minutes, press A in front of it. Pokemon egg inside, do you want it? Yep, you took the egg. There's nothing else in the basket right now. It could stack up to 10. The fun part is, you could have Sprigatito, Fuecoco, Quaxly, and Ditto in a picnic, throw them all out there, and whatever eggs you get are whatever eggs you get. So you can Masuda hunt five Pokemon at the same time. And I think that's pretty awesome. I don't know if it'd be better with three Dittos, or if you only need the one, don't know yet. If you hit right on the D-pad, you'll actually see a timer of how long those active meal powers are going to be active for. You have 30 minutes from the time of cooking this dish. I also like this town right here. My friend Alice told me about it because this restaurant right here, not actually marked on the map, sells an egg level two dish. So if you have more money than time, you could just go buy that dish, set up camp right here. This whole area is flat and makes it very easy to do so. And then just start breeding away. The eggs are automatically put inside of your box. They're not put inside of your party because your party is actively at the picnic. And then in order to hatch, just throw it in your party and start running around. Or more effectively than that, get a flame body Pokemon and then start riding around. There we go. You kind of just stop moving, the egg gets placed in front of you, and then you get this little fun cutscene. Imagine this was shiny. No, that's that's not my luck. That's not my luck in this game. Regular Froy Coco. So now that we've gone over all the methods you're already familiar with, let's talk about some nuances that you can have with new mechanics. And by that, I mean sandwiches. Remember how I said a long time ago that sandwiches are gonna be a huge part of this game? They are. There are some secret sandwiches that are locked to the post game. I'm not gonna talk about the post game, I'm just gonna mention the ingredients, okay? So, you have to go into creative mode, and then you can choose whatever toppings you want in regard to the actual pieces, and then whatever herbs and condiments that you want. I have come up with a list of some pretty basic sandwiches that are going to help you get sparkling power. And these sparkling power sandwiches are going to increase the likelihood that you're going to find a shiny Pokemon of that type. Let's go into a real world example of how you would execute this. I want a mass outbreak that's not any of the Pokemon I currently have on the screen right now. They're Shuppet, I don't want to hunt a ghost because I have to do that at night. He's in the jungle and the frame rate there is horrible right now. I want a different Pokemon to show up. Save my game. I'm gonna close the game. I'm gonna change my time to one minute before midnight, hit okay. Then in game on the right hand side of the screen, Pokemon from the outbreaks are disappearing. There are mass outbreaks occurring. From here, I can just look at what Pokemon are going to be here. Now, before I reach the mass outbreak, I wanna stop right before it. I wanna make sure that auto saves are off and I wanna put down a hard save because these items that you're gonna be cooking with, you don't get them very often. They're only uncommon in five-star raids and you can get them in six-star raids as well. And we are going to be making a sandwich using my handy cheat sheet that I'm showing on screen right now. There you go. That's, that's all the secret shining sandwiches of the game. Shout out to Sunshine Pokemon and Jack33 for helping me with this testing. So I want a water type. So I'm going to take one cucumber, I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna choose two of the Herba Mystica. I've already taken a video of what this sandwich looks like. Isn't that a delicious sandwich? These sandwiches will increase the likelihood you're going to find a shiny Pokemon of the corresponding type. Now, I won't call these perfect sandwiches because I want to come up with sandwiches that are encounter power plus shining power, sorry, sparkling power. I want those two in the same sandwich. Since you can only have one set sandwich buff at a time, you can't do one and then cook the other, they overwrite each other. Once I come up with that, those are gonna be the premium recipes. But for now, this is what we have. It's quick and dirty code and it works. How many Pokemon you defeat during these mass outbreaks determines how many extra shiny rolls you're going to be getting. 
meaning that after you clear your first 30 Pokemon of a mass outbreak, you get an extra shiny roll. After clearing 60 Pokemon, you're gonna be getting two shiny rolls in addition to your base shiny roll. So at that point, that means that you have a one out of 1300 chance exact numbers on screen next to my face. If you were to do a mass outbreak when combining it with sparkling power from sandwiches, you're gonna be having a total of six shiny rolls. That means that your chance of finding a shiny Pokemon is one out of 683, which is pretty great. But if you have the shiny charm for completing the Pokedex, an outbreak of over 60 cleared, and sparkling power level three from a sandwich, you're gonna be having a total of eight shiny rolls, which is a huge number, which means that you have a one out of 512 odd to get that shiny Pokemon from a mass outbreak. It's actually 512.44, which is the exact odds of the Masuda method with a shiny charm. So now we have the exact same odds for Masuda method shiny charm and for Shiny Charm, Outbreak 60 cleared, Sparkling Power. And I think the fact that they've made the overworld Pokemon just as easy to get shiny as breeding eggs is fantastic. So doing that, I was able to go inside of this mass outbreak, knock out a whole bunch of these finnas in, and then eventually there was a purple one, and that's the shiny one. Fantastic. We also have confirmation that there are shiny Pokemon in Terra Raid Dens from legitimate switches. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of this to show you. Just know that it's a thing. I don't have the, if I had the footage, the footage would be here. It's worth noting that the sandwich sparkling buffs that you can get from these sandwiches do not affect Terra Raids or eggs. The only thing, the only sandwich that affects eggs is egg power. There's just one more thing I would like to discuss with you all that as of time of recording at release, there is no information on how we can reverse engineer shiny Pokemon where they exist inside of a den or any information like that. So there is a extremely high likelihood that if you're invited to a raid online and someone says it's a shiny Pokemon guarantee and it's like a really rare and exotic Pokemon, there's probably a good chance that it's hacked and not real. And Nintendo did say that they plan on really cracking down on making sure that if you have an illegal Pokemon, your Switch is going to be banned from going online forever. In fact, during Sword and Shield, there were people who hosted raids that gave you a whole bunch of items during the Zeruora event, and you had no idea if you were joining a real one or a fake one, and other YouTubers hosted these events. and. Thousands of participants who didn't hack their switches or anything who just participated in these raids Got their switches banned from going online forever And it really sucks that we're in a state now that some people are so happy about hosting these hacked Pokemon and It's people like you who unknowingly or willingly decide to join in on these that have to deal with the repercussions of those people's actions so I just want to say now that unless it's a trusted person or a trusted community who will tell you that they didn't hack it in and it's a Pokemon like, I don't know, Fletchender or something, there's a good chance that as of right now it's hacked. In my follow-up shiny hunting video, I'll let you know if that's changed at all or if there's a way to properly reverse engineer these dens to find the authentic real shiny Pokemon that are hosted inside like we did for Sword and Shield. But as it stands right now, please do not participate in these raids as it can have some very, very adverse reactions for you. And I don't want that for you. Well, great. That pretty much wraps up all preliminary pre-launch info you need to know about shiny Pokemon and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I wish you the best of luck in your Paldean adventures, my friends. Be sure to stay subscribed for more information on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Hit the like button on your way out. Until next time, Austin John out. Man, they see me shining like I got the charm. Stay strapped, got that jet ball in my palm. Felt from the sky, guess I'm the chosen one. And if you need to know how, check out Austin John. Champion flow, flow, yeah. I got that champion flow, flow.